This video is most likely going to be quite short, and there's a reason why, and that's because I feel like this kind of topic is something that I shouldn't really be speaking about, and that's just the way how I genuinely feel. However, something came to light last night which just didn't sit right with me, and it does involve a player of my football team, so I'm going to talk about it, and that the contrast of two very different consequences with two very different situations, I just find really um, unsettling, and I find it to be um, counterintuitive in terms of everything that we've seen in the last couple of months and years of progress towards racism in football, of people really trying to kick out these f***ing idiots that's at the football ground. Of course, as a Burnley fan of all teams, um, I've kind of like grown just to kind of just became numb to the countless, you know, jokes that get made to me about the fact that, you know, Burnley's a racist club and etc. and all this bullshit. I can go on for another video um, on, on itself of the positive impact of Black or Bane players for Burnley Football Club, but let's be real, I'll just be wasting my time because most of it are just f***ing idiots just saying dumb shit for the sake of saying dumb shit. People say that Burnley are racist because we don't have that many black players in the team as if that's even like a thing to really compete with. The fact that someone's looking at a football team and saying, oh, okay, they must get more black players because it doesn't make me happy to think that they don't have that many. And you may think I'm wrong, but how I read that is that they want Burnley to specifically pick footballers based on the colour of their skin just to make people happy. I hear the tag that some people get you know, accused of that you know, they're feeling like a quota of like, okay, you must get one, one white person, one woman, one man, one guy black, one guy Asian and like people get accused of filling a quarter. What do you think Burnley would be doing if we were there specifically just trying to sign players of specific skin colours? It just seems stupid to me and also a non-starter just because like we have had many many black or Bane players in our football club in the last couple of years and decades. My literal childhood hero growing up was Adi Akinbayi, and if you can't tell, that's not a British name. Adi Akinbayi is a cult hero for Burnley Football Club. Chant Adi, Adi, Adi. We love him. He represented everything that was good at our football club at the time of a player which there may not be the best football in the world, but he had a personality and he was passionate about how he played football. The most iconic thing with Adia Kimbae was at Stamford Bridge when he scored a goal to get us through of the Colin Cup to knock out Chelsea who I believe was actually champions at the time or reigning champions at the time. We knocked them out of Colin Cup and that will forever be in my memory my greatest Burnley memory and one of the main reasons which got me to support Burnley in the first place. I went in a bit of a tangent there but I think it's useful to kind of explain where I stand with these dumb accusations and it become much more relevant and very soon. The reason why I'm doing this video is that last night there was this tweet from Sky Sports News saying that an Everton fan has been given a three year banning order after being found guilty of using racially abusive language towards Burnley winger Dwight McNeil. And I, I saw this and the first thing I saw was three years. And the reason why that, that came to my mind because I remember literally last but not even last month, like I think two, three weeks ago, that when Everton played against Aston Villa, there was, of course, the incident of uh, a, an Everton fan, I think it was called like Roger Tweedle, which sounds like a fake name, if that's even his name, was given a lifetime ban. And to give context, this isn't like a young lad, like a 17-year-old, which is bad enough as it is. There's been many times that a 17-year-old lad or a young lad has been found guilty of racially abusing a football on the pitch. However, this is for me like worse because this is a 43-year-old woman. 43. She's probably got kids. Someone's mother is at Everton v Burnley and decide to be racist to a Burnley player for whatever reason. And she gets given a three year ban. Everton say they have a zero tolerance policy towards racial abuse and now hopefully Tuesday's conviction will underline that point. Which makes no sense as we see right here with the Aston Villa incident, which happened about literally like two, three weeks ago. And Everton fan got given a lifetime ban. Lifetime ban? for throwing a bottle on the pitch. So let me get it straight. So let me get it straight. So racial abuse, three year ban, throwing a bottle, lifetime ban. I don't need to be a genius to tell you that something seems weird there. How can you have a zero tolerance policy to a 43 year old woman, which should know better, and then give her three years. You can't even say like, oh, maybe she said something that wasn't as bad as other people, which makes no sense as if they have zero tolerance, surely it's just no matter what racial thing you may say that may be seen as racist or racist abuse, you're gone. Simple as that. I don't need to be a genius to tell you this. Of course, you can see right here that this is, of course, I don't want to just pinpoint an Everton. I will give more samples that like, this is not just an Everton thing. Literally, a Liverpool fan towards an Everton player 
literally two weeks ago, got given another three-year ban. A 54-year-old, this isn't like kids, this isn't like young lads of Stone Islands, this is actual grown adults. This is a bloke that was, again, given three years. He was banned from attending any regulated football matches during for three years. A, a bottle, lifetime ban. And I must say, for people like this, idiots like this, that goes on, and I've heard it a hundred times because, like, people like to see that Burnley are, like, a racist club and whatever else. People that are basic questioning if McNeil can even be racially abused because he's not as black as what you think he should be or like he doesn't qualify as being like a person that could be racially abused like you it's just embarrassing like it really is I don't want to talk about it too much because it's not really it's not really worth the effort but like if you are one of these people just just a quick google search just don't be a it really is as simple as that. I, I just don't get it. There's an article here, and honestly, there could be many, many articles I could find of people that has been seen and caught and been guilty of being racist at games and only be given three-year bans. However, some people get four-time bans. A West Brom fan has been banned for life after being found guilty of racially abusing a midfielder on social media. And this was a 50-year-old man as well. So at the end of the day, if you really want to have a zero-tolerance policy, don't give some people a lifetime ban and then give some three years, but give some people a lifetime ban for throwing a bottle on the pitch. If you are zero tolerance, be zero tolerance. As simple as that. That's my thoughts on it. It kind of just really annoyed me from last night. Of course, on this channel, I just kind of just talk about things that I find interesting or things that I feel the need to talk about. And this is one of them. So tell me your thoughts down in the comments. And um, yeah, stay safe, lads. See ya.